welcome to TV Tennessee Valley Church. This week we are at the Doomsday Haunted Attraction in Athens. It's spooky. Tis the season for spooky. Tis the season of Halloween. We're surrounded by pretend ghosts and goblins and such. And obviously haunted towns like this one. Rick Bragg, one of my favorite writers, wrote about his mother's fear of a place called Mill Branch down in Calhoun County, my home county. She thought it was haunted. I never went there after dark, Bragg's mama said, because if you believe in the Lord, if you believe in His goodness and His mercy and His miracles, then you got to believe in them old demons too, don't you? Well, Mrs. Bragg, I do believe in the Lord, His goodness and His mercy and His miracles. Now, I don't believe in ghosts and goblins, but I do believe in demons. It might sound odd in 2024, believing in demons. The famous author, Oxford professor, and Jesus follower, the late C.S. Lewis, wrote that there are two common errors into which people fall when they consider the matter of the devil and his demons. One is to have an excessive and unhealthy interest in them. The other is not to believe in them at all. Satan, suggests Lewis, is equally delighted with both of those errors. I believe Mrs. Bragg was right. If we believe in the Lord, if we believe in His goodness and His mercy and His miracles, then we got to believe in them old demons, too. I believe the evil we see in our world, the violence and abuse, the immorality and injustice, well, they're not just impersonal and random. I believe there is a malevolent designer, a diabolical mastermind, a sinister puppeteer behind the scenes. How does one explain the fact that the world produces enough food to feed everyone and yet people are starving? How does one explain the fact that people whose skin is darker than mine often face obstacles I never have worried about? There is something evil beyond our senses, beyond our understanding, beyond explanation. I understand conflict. I, I understand that hurt people hurt people. I understand that insecure people try to throw their weight around. But there is some conflict, some bullying, some abuse that cannot be explained by sociology or curtailed by conflict management. There's something evil beyond our senses, beyond our understanding, beyond our explanation. I understand a little bit about mental illness and about addiction, but there's often more to destructive behavior than just bad thoughts and bad habits. There is something evil beyond our senses, beyond our understanding, beyond explanation. Even my friend Craig recognizes that. Craig is a screenwriter with whom I once shared a blog. He's not a Christian. He calls himself a spiritual free agent. Craig was in Plano, Texas years ago researching a documentary for MTV about teenagers and heroin. He spent a week with a certain group of young people and there was, Craig said, a desperation and hopelessness to those out of control lives that he had never seen. And he's seen a lot. In Craig's words, Eventually, I looked into their eyes and I thought, oh my God, these kids are possessed for real. This might sound corny, he went on, but the word Satan or devil jumped into my head and stayed there until long after I left. I'm probably not that literal anymore, he said, but the energy I felt was tangible and I will never forget it or make less of it. The Bible names the being behind the frightening energy that Craig felt. That being is called various names in the Bible. Beelzebub, Lucifer, Satan, the devil, the accuser, the enemy, the evil one. Now how the evil one works is a mystery. He doesn't have the ability to be everywhere at once as does God. He's not omnipresent, but his influence is. Perhaps his universal influence is exercised through a mafia-like army of demons. I don't know. However he does it, Satan is on the prowl and seeking lives to ruin. How do we stand against this malevolent being that is out to destroy our world and to ruin our lives? We find the strategy in Ephesians 6. It's called the armor of God. Let's look at that strategy. First, know the truth, or as Ephesians 6 says, buckle up the belt of truth. Know the truth about what's going on in the world. Don't easily buy destructive propaganda. Know the source of the stories you believe. 
Read and listen widely. Don't be naive. Know the truth about your world and know the truth about yourself. This sinister being will whisper demeaning lies to you. I've told you before that I like the singer Jelly Roll. I know he's not everyone's idea of a role model, but I like his honesty. There's a Jelly Roll song that sounds to me like he's talking about the devil. It's called Liar. He sings, I can't count the times. You made me feel like I'm nothing. Played me like a fool, saying, drink another whiskey, pop another pill. Money makes you happy. Heaven isn't real. You won't find nobody to love because your heart's too broke. Now, I know you ain't nothing but a liar. There is one, an evil one, a liar who will whisper in your ear. You are incompetent. You are despised. You are unworthy. You are worthless. Please know you are not who that liar says you are. You are who your Father and Creator says you are. You are loved. You are precious. Blessed by your loving Creator with great meaning and purpose. That's who you are. Know the truth about your world. Know the truth about yourself. Next, guard your heart. Or as Ephesians 6 says, put on the breastplate of righteousness. Wise people refuse to put themselves in tempting situations. They set up boundaries, guardrails. Do you remember the story from Greek mythology about Odysseus and the sirens? The ship of Odysseus and his men was approaching a rocky ledge where there lived the beautiful creatures called sirens, female creatures whose songs were so alluring, so tempting, so seductive that sailors often were drawn to them only to have their ships dashed and battered on the rocks. Odysseus knew that he would have to sail near to these seductive creatures and he knew his weaknesses. So he stopped up the ears of his crew with wax. And then he had his men tie him to the mast of the ship. He ordered them to disregard any directions or commands he might give them to sail toward the sirens. Odysseus knew the insurmountable temptation of the sirens' songs. So he made all arrangements to prevent the possibility that he would succumb to their temptation. Someone listening to me is flirting with the sirens of sorts. You're not putting up guardrails. You're not observing proper boundaries. You're putting yourself in a tempting situation thinking you have the willpower to resist and you're playing with fire. That temptation threatens everything important to you. Guard your heart. Next, fight peacefully, or as Ephesians 6 says, strap to your feet the gospel of peace. Why in the world would would shoes of peace be listed in armor for battle? It's true that there's a spiritual battle going on around us, but we aren't supposed to be always fighting against people, attacking people. It's not Christ-like to be nasty and then to claim that the ends justify the means. There's a classic scene in that classic movie, Casablanca. You might remember it if you've seen the movie. Rowdy Nazi soldiers who have occupied the French territory of Morocco are drinking in Rick's Cafe. The increasingly drunk and rowdy Nazi soldiers start singing the German national anthem, much to the offense of the French citizens in the restaurant. Then, then the band tentatively begins to play the French national anthem. Then a French resistance fighter, Victor Laszlo, begins to sing. And then the locals begin to sing. And the music intensifies. And the song of the French drowns out the song of the Germans. The French customers in the restaurant didn't shout at the Nazi soldiers or attack them. They just sang them down. And one could argue that we should fight evil with acts of kindness and mercy with a willingness to love people whose choices we disagree with and who might unfairly attack us. When others are fighting evil with evil, what if you and I were to fight evil with peace? Some would argue that's weakness. Sounds very Jesus-like to me. Next, choose to believe. Or, as Ephesians 6 says, take up the shield of faith. I love the allegory Pilgrim's Progress. It's a parable that represents those of us who follow Jesus. The main character in the book is named Christian. Christian's arch enemy is Apollyon, who symbolizes the enemy, the evil one, Satan. 
Apollyon is a dreadful monster with scales like a fish, wings like a dragon, and a mouth like a lion. Here I will spill your soul, Apollyon yelled at Christian. And Apollyon threw a flaming dart at Christian's chest. The dart would kill Christian. But the dart was stopped by Christian's shield, saved by the shield of faith. Christian believed in the power of Jesus over the power of Apollyon. And, and though Christian stumbled and failed along the way, he was never overcome by his enemy because he believed. The point of the story, of course, is that faith protects us from the evil influence of the evil one, protects us from the lies that he would tell us, the doubts he would plant in our minds. And faith is a decision. Faith is a decision to know something in your heart, even if you haven't quite figured out everything in your head. Believing Jesus is Lord over all other powers. I'm not finished with the strategies for overcoming the evil one. When I come back in a few minutes, I'll cover the final two. If you've driven Highway 72 just east of Athens, you've no doubt seen Doomsday, the paintball and haunted attraction. Eric Riley and his wife Hannah own this operation here. Eric, this has grown into much more than just a paintball and haunted attraction. Yes, ma'am, it, it really has. Um, over the years, it continues to grow a little bit more each and every year. We now offer both paintball and airsoft birthday parties year round, even Joe Blasters to the little kids. and. Of course, our seasonal haunted attraction where we do the, uh, the corn maze and haunted woods. People think haunted house, scary, witches, demons, but that's not necessarily. You, correct, yeah, you know, we, don't, uh, we don't do anything uh, evil or sacrilegious. It's actually, we, we say we're not evil, we're entertaining. Uh, it's all about the, the shock and entertainment value and factor. We want people to be absorbed in a real atmosphere, uh, but walk away with real life lessons and experiences. We've been through, Tennessee Valley Church has gotten to tour through here. It's spectacular. What is your favorite? Um, I, I'm pretty partial to the, uh, to the haunted woods myself. Um, it allows you to put a lot into detail into the different sets and uh, get to use them year round for more than just a haunted house. Of course, they get to play paintball and airsoft as well as, uh, you know, letting people like yourselves come out and use some of these sets for good. Uh, you know, it was all built with the uh, family fun uh, atmosphere in mind. You know, people think haunted house, oh, it's evil, but it's, it's really not like that. What is new this year for people who've been here in the past? Oh my goodness, uh, a lot. Uh, yeah, I would say we've probably added nearly double the sets uh, this year. Uh, everything from full-on farms to uh, military bases. We've got covered bridges and uh, we've got an entire town down here, plane crashes. I and mean, there's, there's a lot that's new for this year. And this is important to have a family atmosphere, like you mentioned. You're a father with one child and then one on the way. Correct, Congratulations. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank Why you. is that important to you and Hannah? Well, I grew up on a, a small farm growing up with a lot of responsibilities. And um, I think I was in that tail end of the 90s kids kind of thing where, you know, we didn't have cell phones and internet and we played outside like a lot of uh, your listeners probably did. And mm -hmm. I feel like uh, the world has trended far away from where it should be. Um, so I wanted to create a fun atmosphere for not just drawing people in with the haunted house that maybe is a, a totally different crowd that maybe hasn't experienced it, but the paintball and airsoft is a great way for, you know, fathers and their sons to come out and, you know, see what it's like to learn leadership from, you know, retired vets and active duty police members, uh, as well as, um, you know, the, the fellowship and gathering you wouldn't think a haunted house can bring, you know, the bonfires, the roasting marshmallows, the stories, uh, the family time, you know, that's a lot of things that, you know, fall festivals, it seems like that 
it's a wildly popular thing, but also with the television and Netflix and internet, it seems like a lot of people don't make the time to come out and support the, the local farms and family-owned family entertainment platforms like Doomsday has become. I want to mention too, you also do a toy drive at Christmas and you're collecting, you're doing hurricane relief from the hurricane victims. Yeah, uh, we do have our Doomsday disaster relief care package right under the grand archway as you come in. If you come through the attraction or paintball or even drive by, uh, that basket's there during the week. Uh, people have actually brought out a lot. They've brought, you know, canned food, pillows, blankets. Um, I've seen all kinds of different, you know, uh, toiletries dropped off, things that people really do need in those affected areas. Um, as far as you brought up the toy drive, uh, we usually partner with Toys for Tots. Uh, we do a completely 100% uh, free to the public to come in. Just we ask you bring a, a toy, $20 value, donate it. That's your ticket to get in. Uh, and we do team up with the Marines for the Toys for Tots so we can get those out to the most in need. And Eric, I want to thank Slippy Evans, who's made a few appearances here I'm at TV Church. <laughs> I'm sure. And if anyone comes out, they'll of course see him at the haunted attraction. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Eric. Thank you. Today, in this Halloween season, we're remembering that there really is something out there something evil beyond our senses, beyond our understanding, beyond explanation. We're talking about how we stand against that evil and we're looking to Ephesians 6. So far we've seen know the truth, guard your heart, fight peacefully and choose to believe. Here are the final two strategies from Ephesians 6. Place your hope in the champion of the universe or as Ephesians 6 says, put on the helmet of salvation. Colossians 2 says that Jesus on the cross triumphed over the powers we're talking about today and made a public spectacle of them. Hebrews 2 says that Jesus broke the power of the evil one by his death. Our best defense against the powers of evil is to trust our lives to the champion of the universe. Now, I'm going to come back to that. The final strategy, know the Bible. Or as Ephesians 6 says, take up the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. Learning, loving, and living the Bible will make a big difference in your life. I have a friend of many, many years who lives in a place far from here. He grew up hard, the son of an alcoholic, father of a harsh mother who took out her unhappiness on her children. He grew to, the, to adulthood with the wounds of childhood. When I met him, he was a Christian and active in church, but he had secret struggles rooted in hard days as a child. The enemy held him captive to the pain of his past. Then he made two decisions that changed his life. The first, interestingly, was a decision to tithe, to give one-tenth of his income to God. <laughs> That's a lesson for another day. His second decision was to read the Bible every day. And he began to read careful, carefully and faithfully. Even he was surprised at what a difference it made. Eventually, he decided to read the Bible through in a year. And he's done that several times. I wish you could know the difference that learning, loving, and living the Bible has made in his life. His faith, his character, his strength, his peace. I would challenge you to a commitment to the joy and the discipline of learning, loving, and living the Bible. There is something evil beyond our senses, beyond our understanding, beyond explanation but we can stand against him. And we don't have to fear him personally. A moment ago, I talked about putting our hope in the champion of the universe. And I said I'd come back to that. Well, I'm coming back to that. The Bible is clear about the, the dominance of Jesus over the prince of darkness. I love knowing and following this Jesus. I love having him walk alongside me by his spirit. It feels safe even though I know there's an evil being who would love to do me harm. Last week, we shot TV Church at night over at the Veterans Memorial downtown Huntsville. That evening, I met Keith Williams. Lisa Greer Morris interviewed him. Keith has a ministry in the Morgan County Jail. Keith is a big man with a history of arrests and drug abuse before his dramatic encounter with Jesus. Our crew was walking from our cars out toward the back of the park where we were going to shoot. Keith and I were the last two. We were in the back of the group. A man we didn't know came up behind us. He looked like the streets were his home. 
Keith must have sensed some danger. He, he gently put his muscular arm around me and said to our new friend, not tonight, not tonight. Forgive my simple analogy, but in a dark and spooky world, my hope is not in my own goodness or my own power to withstand evil. My hope is in one who can put his arm around me and say to the evil one, not tonight. 1 John 4 says of Jesus' followers, Greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. So I can sleep safe and sound even on a spooky night. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I have tasted of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence lord
Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence. Hi everyone, I'm Holly Knupp, minister to meeting adults at First Baptist Huntsville. We are folks in our 40s and 50s, married, single, and empty nesters. We'd like to invite you to any of our in-person studies, small groups, or social events. Check out our website or email me at holly at fbchsv.org for more information. We look forward to building community and growing our faith together with you. This week on TV Church, we're talking about things that are spooky. Hey, how you doing? Hey, come here. Good. All right, good, good job. 